Hello there, everyone, and thank you for joining me here again, once again, and Tia Note. Little Ozzy's up here, but I'm your host, Mr. Uh, well, I guess Guangdong Lover, but we gotta talk about Clampdown. The blackguards had barely been raised, and the demands had barely been voiced before the universe did. Barely minutes later, the strikers were in handcuffs and being dragged away, some so convulsing from the taser shock. The managers who had called them in walked over to give thanks for the timely assistance, but soon found themselves joining the work workers on charges of gross negligence. The next day, a message appeared to the management of Factory Associated, with the one that had gone on strike the day before. New measures were to be taken, new safeguards and policies were to be implemented, and with the aid of new technology generously provided by Fujitsu, future disruption in the workflow process was to be taken as indication of highly unprofessional conduct for workers and management alike. Such negligence will be investigated and dealt with to the highest extent of the law, administered by Fujitsu's dedicated response personnel. Some handy photographs and visual aids were attached to the memo, just in case Factory Management doubted the severity of Fujitsu's potential displeasure. They were not pleasant. Back to work. But right now, uh, what are we doing? We are, well, we're just always trying to get more police control up here like normal. Uh, we're doing actually pretty darn well now at this point. Police control is, I would not say completely solidified, but it's 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 there. It's kind of there for now. Um, we have a little bit of corruption, 6%, but we're also doing setting up cameras in offices, so I'm not concerned. Uh, ooh, the cap has drastically been lowered. Ooh, 53.6. We're barely below the cap. That kind of sucks. Um, why did it drop so low? But, you know, not much we're going to really do about that now. But in the meantime, we're doing big ambitions. A book of monster is not a man given to compromising on his vision, and he will not compromise on eliminating anyone who stands in his way. To give the tribes any room to breathe is to give them room to become a thorn in our side again later. A partial patch in this case will be a worse than a comprehensive fix. There will always be contrarians who argue that we cannot realistically expect the Guangdong police force to uproot an entire empire for organized crime. They're wrong. We'll spare no expense and no amount of manpower to prove it. So, we aim high to take out the, the triads instead of realistic expectations. So, if you don't know about this one, please go ahead. Expectation management and precision are also virtues. Surgical strikes. Hmm. Or we can do a synergistic delegation. To achieve big goals, we need the Yakuza as resources. We could. But I don't want more Yakuza control. That's what I really don't want. But we will handle it. <coughs> no sane engineer would hand over control of the most sensitive, delicate components of their creation to a third party. There is far too much risk of information leaks and un unauthorized modifications that spoil the end product. The same applies for a plan to dismantle the triads and capture Stanley Ho. We'll keep the Guangdong police firmly in the driver's seat for the operation, and where they fall short, we'll lean on Fujitsu to provide computer assisted analysis to identify key targets of interest. Our Yakuza partners will be kept to strictly auxiliary roles. The police shall strike with surgical precision. I'm not sure that's the right one to do, but we'll see. You know, if we make a mistake, I'll go back and try to figure it out. Tickets. Do the observation deck were ludicrously expensive, but the man paid anyway. The elevator was qu quicker, but he elected to take the stairs. Something. Some more time to think, to contemplate, his thoughts found nothing but emptiness. He ascended, at last with the physical sensation of arms and legs moving, but as a cloud of mist being stuck towards an inevitable destination, and here he was. A few steps more. Then over the railing, behind him, someone dialed a number, as procedure dictated. The man hung against the edge and started to scream. He screamed for a long time, he screamed for a reason to live, for the vice squeezing him to loosen. He screamed for a life which held meaning beyond having every last drop of value squeezed out of him in the name of profit. He screamed for a world which did not watch his every passing move. His last of these wishes was granted. Nobody looked up. Nobody helped. The cars kept moving in front of him. The cleanup crew had already moved into position as procedure dictated. <coughs> Despair gripped the man's heart. Was this life then? Was this existence to be brought into the world to be trained to perform like a circus animal for unseen overlords? To spend the majority of one's existence in an endlessly expanding and repeating cycle, giving just barely enough fact to ensure its own repetition. And the human machine eventually wore out in body or spirit to be efficiently packed away and disposed of. Like any other tool, better oblivion, better and endless, nothing. The man left forth, as procedure dictated. All out of salt, clearly the chief had anticipated, gave him this briefing for some time, and hoped that it was time. The man was absolutely feeling himself. Lamb hoped his good mood would result in a reasonable rate of overtime for the exhausting few days ahead, but, you know, he doubted it. Gentlemen, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. The time has finally come to sever the head of the snake and deal with Guangdong's organized crime syndicate, a blow from which they'll never recover. Guangdong's organized crime, sure, fat lamb. Plenty more room for Japan's organized crime that way. The chief pulled out a comically large stack of papers from under his desk and thumped it down on the desk theatrically. As you can see, our friends in the intelligence community have been busy. Here we have a long, long list on every scrap of dirt, implication, and a shred of evidence we have on every tribe's scumbag in our fair quarter of Koshu. And we have orders to act on it all. No criminal will be safe. Nobody implicated will be out of harm's way. Operation 489 will be to our enemies today. What Operation Ichigo was to them 20 years ago. Most of the room went up and cheered, which Lam mimed along, as the chief abandoned and the rousing speech and went into the operational section of the briefing. Lam felt a growing sense of unease. It seemed like high up uh, had decided that they were already victorious and were charging in like a bull in a china shop. Who knew what kinds of leads could get buried by such recklessness? The fist slams. No corruption. Barely any, but we still have a little bit, which is unacceptable. 
This is just so too high, but whatever. Happy May, everybody, as we're getting ready for another year of uh, profit. Or at least product release. So that's just 40. That's 17 away. The other two are really low, which is, you know, halfway decent. So, can't only complain so much. Shocking off. Uh, we could have done this one, but I really don't want to do it. Two big goals, we need the Yakuza. Yeah, keep it quiet. Slow and steady wins a race. And I don't want to increase the Genpai influence. Even though it does increase it way more here, it decreases Chinese influence, but it decreases triad, con triad control. So, we can't send a message to the tribes by focusing on small fry, rolling up their crime networks from the bottom up in quiet arrests. The only message these subs will understand is one of overwhelming force. A hammer blow of high profile grades and acid seizures. They'll leave them days in supine before us. We'll start from the top. We'll work our way down. The tribes will learn to fear us and the wrath of the chief executive, Ibuka. Oh, we were so close. We definitely need more command bar, though. I like how China just we're ready for another Japanese invasion. Uh, tiny bit of corruption. Um, approval? Yeah, we can do these. We've got the political power for right now, but we do have to save it for... It's May, so any second now, pretty much. Oh, oh, I can go to 30%. That's not bad. It's better than what I thought. 62% is not bad, too. The balance trade? Mm, yes. That certainly sounds agreeable. Uh, song finally replied. Ibuka Masu's drop practically hitting the desk. What is this? What, what's happening? The chief executive had entered the meeting with folders in hand and no expectations of mine, as he had learned to do whenever he mentioned something or mentioned economic cooperation with the Chinese consulate. There was always something that his opposite had to break up whatever line of attack he took, tariffs or Chinese worker treatment, or some meaningless piece of bureaucracy back in Nanjing. The consul general had both an encyclopedic knowledge of the delaying tactics and the skill to utilize them constantly, yet all of a sudden it was as if he had been replaced with someone who Ibuka Masaru could work with. It was too good, he re suddenly realized, stiffening his chair as he watched the consul's eyes flicker over the paper. There was something coming. Do you have any more comments? He mumbled quietly, hoping his go was simply misjudging the situation. It only took a moment for the consul to prove his instincts right. Oh, uh, yes, one thing the consul general continued. Straightening in his chair, your corporations, Fujitsu, Sony, Masashita, the like. They enjoy generous subsidies of both of their profits. If Chinese corporations are to compete in such an established market, it's only fair that we receive the same subsidies. Profit for Guangdong, profit for China, victory for both of us. Masaru, Ibuka Masaru frowned. You know very well that our Tokyo backs our corporations. They expect me to maintain their dominance. Allowing competition will allow co won't cause too much trouble, but giving Chinese companies Japanese money is a different question. Yeah, I imagine it will cause some fuss, Song replied in a genial tone. But you're businessman. Surely you see the opportunities for the Chinese market here, and you too could use better trade relations with China, yes? Hundreds of millions of customers just across the border, money in hand, waiting for products from Canton and Guangdong. Please, Chief Executive, consider my proposal. Perhaps I can see some of these restrictions. Uh, if nothing else, I'll have to consult with Tokyo first, I'm afraid. You want to piss these guys off a little bit more. Uh, the cap is just so... It's just it's not good. Mm. Is it worth pissing them off? GDP will increase. That's not bad, but... Mm, I don't want to burn goodwill here. You get more growth, though. Decreases this by 3%. I don't want to do that. Imperial General. Uh, let's see. If you're wondering about this, please go ahead. I've ever read this one before, so. Yeah, hey, we'll see. How many more days for the product cycle? Three! <laughs> what are we selling now, guys? What are we selling now? Hey. Hey. The Falcom 23075. Full backwards compatibility. Automatic error detection. 142% profit. Nice. This one we're gonna really burn a lot of uh, money towards in Fords. Uh, cool. Nine, two, three, four, five. Nice. Share target markets. I want to make as much money off this one as possible for this one. Uh, the German market will still be very profitable, which is good. Everyone else is pretty much too, except for Italy and Iberia. Nope. Nope. Or so are the Germans. We all handle it. Fujitsu affiliated. The discussion began earnestly. Koshu was a sleepless city. There wasn't a resident of the place that didn't know that. Sandwiches of piping hot black tea were handed out to the officers of the meeting room as Lam began to give his address a program regarding Operation 489. Small steps, as it always seems. We've identified a few more warehouses some of the subsidiary subsidiary tribe organizations are operating out of, mainly by the Harbor District. I can schedule. A number of smaller operations will begin by next week. Mostly raids on triad affiliated villages out of the city. Something for the younger officers, huh? After the few laughs and snickers that left the officers subside, a lamp flipped the folder to reveal the next item of his address, an address regarding the officers affiliated with Fujitsu. 
Uh, as you all know, we have a few colleagues among us connected with Fujitsu Limited. They're, uh, they're working in the field of data delegation. Were the officers working on that like to say a few words? Yes, we would, thank you. Jing Sheng immediately spoke up. While the specific aspects of data delegation won't be important for the uneducated officers here, its primary purpose is to ensure the Yakuza wouldn't be able to taint the police force, in that sense. We'll send some type of information their way to placate them, then we'll work from underneath them to assault the triads. Jing uh, Shang smiled, almost curly, as if looking and looking back at Lam. The moment you'll figure out what organization needs what information, send a report our way. Lam began to part his lips, but decided to keep them shut as the rest of his colleagues drowned the room with applause. An old man in a young man's world. The job. <coughs> the men of their orders, the traps were ready to be sprung, the Guangdong police and the Yakuza, aided by our intelligence and analysts, parsing phone records with the help of Fujitsu mainframes, are closing in on Stanley Ho and his petty kingdom of sin. He will no doubt attempt to salvage whatever he can, or failing that, go, go to ground with the assistance of his tried associates, or Morito. Should he come to that? It matters not. There was never enough room in Guangdong for three kingpins, and Chief Executive Ibuka and Yokoi Hideke have said that Stanley Ho is the weakest link. All that remains is to roll the dice. This time, the results of the raids on the triads depends on chosen focuses. Oh crap. Well, if it doesn't go well, it doesn't go well, well, maybe you just unbook yourself, just in case. Benching up our naval doctrine. Because, you know, we're such sailors here. We're super sailors. Not just nor your normal sailors, but super sailors. So we're currently at 50 and 40, which is not great, but whatever. You know what, screw it. We got the political power. Let's do it. Only 2.46 political power every day. Is that it? It is not enough. Yeah, I think we're capped. 0.57. Uh, let's see. Come back up here. Good. 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 Because of culture corruption. Republic of China opinion cap. 1957. If you wonder about that, please go right ahead. Through all the years past, to all the years hence. We'll see what's good and bad. Good, bad, and ugly, at least. So now 17 more days. 55, 55 is pretty decent. It's not perfect, but, you know, whatever. <coughs> we... I can't buy tie raptor over there. Crap, look at them all. How pretentious can you get? Well, allow me to differences of the newly recruited Zong man. Crapping on the Camp Ai Tao is something they could both get behind. He swore he could remember one of those entitled a-holes swinging around a katana back in the day, but while these Camp Ai Tao agents weren't exactly brandishing ancient blades, the Koshu police officer could smell something foul about them. They walked with some type of smugness, too, and as they shook hands, Lam knew that he was beneath them. An inferior, Officer Lam, the security estimates for Operation 489 have just been completed. We handed out a bunch of reports already at your headquarters, and we brought this spare just for you. Take a look at it with some quality police work. Lamb flicked through the pages of the report work, each page detailing a set of tried affiliated warehouses, businesses, corner stores, grocery stores, churches, industrial zones, and schools. As Lamb flicked through the list, a variety of each soon to be rated establishment grew and grew for further to a further further ten pages. By the time that I had read through the thing, he felt like he was about to vomit. Lamb looked back up to the Camp Atai agent. The thin man smirked and simply said, We'll be in touch. It was a bridge too far. Most of these establishments must have had a little affiliation with the triads, and some of them Lamb frequented, him, frequented himself. The Camp Atai cannot be allowed to go through with this. The wary officer shook his head and turned back around, passing the report to Zong as he walked back into the police car. He couldn't take on the Koshu Camp Atai himself, and the quicker this BS was done with, the better. Let them tend to their own gardens, of course. So we're 31 right now, and the job. Well, we'll order a society. <laughs> We have thoroughly and extensively cleaned the formerly vexatious society of Guangdong of its internal corruptions. We have subjugated a rapid beast once soon to be untamable, Ibuka, the man that embodies vision and drives the united Guangdong under the triumphant banner of progress, concord, and merit. The once unruly and obseps obstreperous Andor has been pacified, their illicit activities and backdoor deals no longer plague us. The perfissurous, pestiferous worms of ineptitude and corruption no longer wreath Right within the ripe fruit of government, having been rooted out by our efforts, our citizens now obedient to the law and grateful for our gifts, thrive off of the lucrative opportunities we have granted them. Our security forces now adequately fulfill the standards of modernity, a newly invigorated institution that ensure no obstacles exist to the united vision. The cogs of the well-oiled machine continue to rotate, carrying Guangdong in a future of harmony uninterrupted by uninterrupted by the forces of dissent and inefficiency. A book is a chief part of his vision. For Guangdong now stands from an adamant, ready for the endeavors the future will bring. Everything has its place. Everything has a role, exactly as Fujitsu assigns. Good. Very good. So where are we at right now? We're at 55-55. Do we lose this? No, we have solid two there. Uh, 57 days left. If we're at 55 and 55, we can earn a little more goodwill. We want to do these bigger ones first, though. There you go. That should shoot us up quite a bit. And it's only July. The job. I hope, God, the job does okay. Probably still getting slightly worse, which kind of sucks. Panopticon. 
Yeah, the cap goes down by 25%. The opinion cap by 35% for the, from the Republic of China. Which is not ideal. Very much not ideal. Oh, we got the police up here too. Oh, that's so good. Barely though, but we're up there. Where are we at? 85 and 70%. Nice. 38 days left. The die is cast. <coughs> uh, the rain battered the uh, Yuxi Tarmac as lamb. And his men moved into position. The rumored meeting spot was an altogether unremarkable hotel ways off of the beaten path. Far more inconspicuous than the force moving towards it. Twelve cops, all armed to the teeth, alongside a small handful of Camp Atai men acting as, obser as observers. Lam had his own suspicions about what, who and they were for, therefore, but Joseph kept his mouth shut. The armored automatics were more for intimidation than actual uh, use, according to the command. The tribes would be caught with their pants down and give up without a fight. Lam was not as optimistic, but he'd find out in a few moments whose predictions would prove more accurate. He shivered. The night was cold, the rain cold, and the death potentially lay on the other side of the door. But Lam was becoming just as unnerved as the prospect of Operation 49 success as that of failure. Lam had little sympathy for the cutthroat dudes in the triads, but even had less for the GPS new Yakuza friends. He wondered if the inevitable result of all this would be organized crime being one less career path closed off to the Chinese in Guangdong. Even the underworld is becoming segregated these days. Lam sighed. He'd made this choice years ago, and in any case, these men were not innocent by a long stretch. But who was in the city? He gave a signal and the moon moved in. Ballroom blitz. <laughs> the sound of muffled groans filled the conference hall. Some police, mostly tried, lay on the floor, dead or incapacitated. Just a few minutes ago, the room might have been described as charming as many of the Sun Yi An's highest unranking gangsters sat down for a lavish meal, guarded by a small contingent of enforcers. Now, the wine trickled into the pools of blood. Its crisp, rich scent overpowered by the noxious fumes of tear gas. Bullet holes peppered the walls and furniture. Lamb and his colleagues said about cuffing the survivors, who by now put a little more than token resistance. One enforcer made the mistake of spitting on a Kenpai Toy officer from the ground. The officer's boot promptly sent the stricken man's teeth into his throat with a stick, sickening crunch. Lamb was complaining, but thought better of it. The man was low ranking anyway, and therefore of little use to Operation 49. A handful of the bosses still lay, but most had been taken alive, groaning from wounds with the gas. Time to call dispatch. Officer Hayashi Kozen, badge number LC049, reporting in, requesting meat wagon and an ambulance to the 54 Huilong Road. Four suspects dead, eight wounded, 26 overall in, uh, oh, inbound, uh, one officer down, two wounded, over. Copy that officer, excellent work, Dis replied dispatch, sending medical teams ASAP. Be advised, meat wagon for un uninjured personnel may take time as we are currently experiencing an extremely high volume of arrests, over. Copy that dispatch, Hayashi out. Nice. So, that many days left. Tries collapse. As you know, you could have just sent me an invitation if you wanted to see me that badly, said Stanley Ho. It sounds cuffed in his lip split. Hope for your sake that the judge is more than easily amused than us, said Ibuka, whose face remained impassive. You're in a good deal of trouble. I run a legitimate business, Chief Executive. I'm sure this is all just a misunderstanding, of course. Nothing a uh, nice giant glass of Sauvignon Blanc can fix, said Ho. Uh, his bloodied and bruised face giving his best impression of a cheerful smile. I'm afraid not, Mr. Ho, said Ibuka. You and your legitimate business with it are implicated among other things illicit gambling, racketeering, arms smuggling, fraud, and insider trading. The list goes on. A few tickets behind bars, I'd wager, but you're the gambler, of course. I'm assuming, assuming you didn't bring me here in just a glow, said Ho, who had just stopped smiling. You're a busy man. There must be something you wish of me. Oh, that's where you're wrong, Mr. Ho, said Ibuka, now wearing an uncharacteristic smile. I am indeed a very busy man, in no small part due to you and your friends. Busy times ahead, too, for some reason. Sony and Chong Kong haven't been doing so well on the Koshu Exchange lately, and I intend to make sure they lost his Fujitsu's game. But before I deal with that, I look like... I felt like looking upon the, as it turns out, rather unimpressive face of the man who caused me so much trouble. I've done so, and as I say, idle hands are the devil's workshop. Man, take him away. Time to get back to work. Decreases try to control the city by 2%. Every state. Decreases police control by 1.5%. Decreases corruption. Oh. Beautiful, my friends. We did it. The Engineer's Paradise. How, so how does one define victory after all? Going by the strictest definition, victory is but the defeat of those who dare to stand in our way, and this we have certainly accomplished. What more fitting a testimony to our victory is there, then, than the countless half-wits and bleeding hearts we triumphed over, now left wallowing and seething without a place under our vision? But to those of us who have dedicated our minds and hearts to all those dear to this jewel of the South, victory means more, so much more. Victory is one technological marvel after another lining up the shelves and storefronts. Victory. It's a row after row of chrome-clad skyscrapers sprouting across the horizon, every one of them an engine of progress, a pillar of the future. Victory is the long way to tranquility finally descending upon our streets, punctuated only by the clatters of factory gears and the vigilant beeps of Fujitsu automatons. But above all else, victory is knowing that no matter how many wrangles and struggles we went through along the way, we, under the guidance of Chief Executive Ibuka, stay true to our one and only purpose, to innovate and illuminate the savage earth with our brilliance. Victory is the dream realized as Guangdong cast its blazing light upon this magnificent blue marble we all stand on forever and ever. Greatness is not measured by men's achievements, but by their ambition. Beautiful. 
Is that every own state? Nice. More seats? More growth? Nice. So we're going to be at 80%. I don't mind doing what? Uh, maybe this one or this one. Uh, guess I have a pee pee. I'm not going to race it ahead of time, but we'll see. But we got rid of them. That's actually really nice. Strain them. The Yakuza thrives. Mr. Gyoko, I understand that we have an arrangement, and I tend to stick to it for as long as you do. City book over the phone, however, would it kill you to ask your men to turn it down a notch? I'd remind you that all Guangdong's harbors are for ships to move in and out of, not to be used as your trash can. <coughs> They're not my men, Chief Executive. I'm just a simple investor. And go between, came Yokoi's voice through the receiver. I can send some friendly advice down their way, but as far as a concern right now, it's all you can eat buffet. I'm sure things will calm down soon enough, but you, of all people, should understand the importance of uh, opportunity. I hope you understand that they're not calm down. You'll be held personally responsible. Uh, Yokoi laughed. That's that's so, Chief Executive. You lost a chance to hold me responsible when you made this deal of ours. Now, when my dealings are your dealings, how bad do you want them to expose? If my ship goes down, yours goes with it. Your ship will go down either way if Tokyo sees your bodies and your drugs piling on the streets and decide to make an example of us both, you and Seki Ibuka. Get them all to calm down and do it properly. Another trickle. Relax, Ibuka. Didn't I just tell you I'd have a friendly chat? Don't worry, you, don't you worry about a thing. But remember, as far as Japan's concerned, they're your bodies and your drugs now, too. Yokoi hung up. Darn it. Don at all. Just waiting. Uh, that, oh. Oh, this is a good one. For 10 days, we get 12 and a half. 12 and a half. That's almost perfect. So we get another one down here for interest. For 5 days, that's pretty good too. 10. So now we're 85. And it should just continue to go up. Oh. Wait, this one too, 10 days. Ooh. I might go back and actually, eh, 12 and a half. I mean, that's pretty close. Maybe not. How many days does this take? Five? So where are we at for this? Grease quality by 12 and a half, so we'll get 97 and a half. 95 will almost be perfect if we do this one, and we'll be good. Well, not quite 100% like last time, but, you know, whatever. <coughs> yeah, satisfactory report. Early mornings were a period of rare calm for Ibuka. It was a time we took to read the various non-urgent reports which came by his desk every day, a rare moment of respite. Before hours spent about the incumbent of buffoons who had, had to be screamed at constantly to perform at a baseline level. The reports generally gave a thorough, a general thorough line as to who would be getting screamed at and what for. Good, look at that. Even between the dry financial reports and some less dry findings from R&D, Ibuka eyed something he had been waiting for on for some time. The final report from Tsushinityoda. Considering the final outcome of Operation 49 and the present state of organized crime within the Three Pearls, looking through the contents, Ibuka allowed himself as a rare smile. The operation had been an almost resounding success. The major triad groups have been effectively crushed. Their leaders, either behind bars or believed to have been fleeing, fleeing north. Some of their operations have been effectively stamped out by the state security. The large chunks of triad business were now under management of the Yakuza. For the part, the Yakuza appeared to have calmed down somewhat since the period of immediately following Operation 49. However, open disrespect towards GPF personnel by suspected Yakuza members had increased significantly. Something reflected in a general uptick in Yakuza associated violent incidents. Whilst it requires swift correction, crime rates generally had gone down significantly, marking a victory for both Guangdong Security Services and Ibuka's administration. After satisfying himself with the contents of Sushin Yoda's report, he turned the photo over to discover much less glowing report concerning inefficiency in Fujitsu Semiconductor Production Facilities. Why do I even pay you people? Hey, the Falcom 23075! The dawn of integrated circuits continues to revolutionize computer technology at an ever faster pace. The latest product of this revolution is Fujitsu Limited new Falcom 23075, with processing speeds up to seven times faster than Fujitsu's previous 23060 model. It also boasts a much larger memory capacity. That greater capacity allows a 23075 to store error detection and correction code, allowing the system to retry or reconfigure code automatically if it encounters an unexpected error. This brings us closer to the day when computers can truly think. This should make debugging less of a hassle. So, we got not perfect amounts, but we decreased Japan's approval. Yeah, but um, I really wanted to maximize growth as much as possible this time because things might go really haywire soon enough. We'll see. I don't know. Nothing, to, nothing we know about what's going to come. The invisible hand unveiled. The book and the engineers of Fujitsu's export division celebrated the Verschaft Nets, the first week of every free operation. 
Essential Soup, a computer hadn't been too daunting to create, as it was simply a scaled up version of an existing mainframe. The other components were another matter entirely. Computer networking was a field still in its infancy. And trying to get different mainframes separated by hundreds of kilometers to talk to each other while crashing from desynchronization was a cause of many a headache. However, Fujitsu had emerged from this having created a network that connected computers across multiple institutions and critical industries. The Berlin Germania stock market, Deutsche Bank, and its subsidiaries, then Siemens formed nodes on a web that all linked back to the decision making center of the Ministry, ministry of Economics. Herr Erhard would have all the data he and his economists needed at their fingertips and would be forever in Fujitsu's debt. Well, despite all having an under operation, the Weltschaftnet had already generated significant positive press. Already, many other German companies and even lower se level sectors of the Reich's government are lining up to purchase Fujitsu mainframes for forecasting and administration. Fujitsu appears poised to drive a German digital revolution. Uh, Fujitsu's empire of copper spread to Europe. Oh boy. So we're above 23% growth. Obviously not enough. Hmm. A little bit of corruption here, huh? Increases corruption, increases Yakuza. 4%, 4, uh, how much corruption do we get every month? Shaping the world with you. 0.1%, we can drop this one. Sometimes I wonder if it's always been like this. As I stood, as the noise wrapped lazily against my skull, the snapping of scissors against the red ribbon fabric, the blurring of confetti guns, the round after round of shouts, cheers and claps from below the stage, united in the intoxicated jubilation. They say the Koshu Research and Development Nexus is to be the pinnacle of it all. A crown jewel. Upon the intricate clockwork that is today's Guangdong, is summoned by great, great chief executive Ibuka Master himself with such unparalleled dedication. Why, they hadn't bothered to ask the man himself, had they? An experiment can succeed in only one way, or fail in thousands more. Fujitsu could have abandoned the Three Pearls wholesale back in 55. Akio could have turned the entire legislative council into his shanty house back in 64. Tomorrow, Matsushita's geriatrics might finally decide they want to whore around with their leaps of cash and walk out on us. There was never a pinnacle, only the never-ending ramp upwards and the pitfall after pitfall creeping beneath its surface behind our feet and head. Too many of Fujitsu's men had missed their footing since they made the mistake of dragging me into their lot, and too many of them had plunged into the void. Perhaps someday, to somehow, I'll end up dragging Guangdong down into the void too. Perhaps then the fifty young, bright men and women rose to the stage and on their faces was hope. Unadulterated joy. Penetrate the darkness, their smiles did, and for an iota of a second, the photos of God's light graced my heart once again. Even if I were to succumb to failure and ruin one day, even if Guangdong were to crash and burn tomorrow, not all will be lost, for today this jewel of the South sails at full mass down a once wondrous voyage. A voyage that, but for me, far too many would have never seen the chance to embark on it in the first place. So hey, cut yourself some slack, Masaru. You know you've done more than enough for our sake. It's 10, 19 a.m. Gleaming and shimmering is the path ahead. So where are we at for this? Hey, 14 ahead. Not bad. So now, the real form begins in 1970 as we wait for the oil crisis to make everything go kind of kaboom. Routine. The footsteps weren't even here yet, but Fong Ji Leong already felt the thud. He grabbed An Huang and Ah Ling by the shoulder and dashed into the corner of the dirt house of the living room and clutched the two children as close as he could. He didn't make for the door because there was no point. This great jailhouse named Koshu had sealed off all exits long ago. What have they done wrong? Not a single darn thing, and he knew it. Not his fault some Fujitsu big shot decided to snatch his own factor from him, and not his fault he chose to stand up for himself and all his workers. Not his fault the system had dumped him on the streets and all that the chief executive Ibuka had done about it was to look on from the billboards above and his eternal gigantic effing grin hanging on his face too. Maybe K. Hoi would have stormed out of the raging waters to earn the morsels for the whole family, but that tough, lovely woman not gone from this earth too soon. But who knew anymore? Two more days and the half-working fridge would go empty and so would Ah Hwing and Ah uh, uh, Ling's bellies. Not much exactly left time for what ifs, were there? Maybe the waiter had caught the side of them slipping away from the table, maybe he hadn't. The cameras down the block apparently have, at least. He hadn't bothered to turn his head back to see whatever blue jackals or brown hyenas are hot on his trail to see whether the latest toys they've been swinging around. He blessed his mouth with one last drop of gravy, seeing one last flush, flash of joy on his children's faces. And that was enough. It was the best I could get. Bang, there came the clattering of shattered wooden planks, then the thump of boots on the floor. And strode the lapis draped man from the cold afternoon light for a split second. Jing Leong saw something swirling in his face. Shame, guilt, pity? Didn't matter. Not a single trace of it remained on the man as he raised a walkie talkie to his lips. LCO49, Hayashi Kozen reporting. Suspects located, requesting meat wagon immediately. But now, we're going to see what happens uh, when things are going to really start breaking down as uh, we're just still kind of hanging out. We do have a uh, comment though, but turbulent times. The wind nearly blew Y over as she and her friends waited uh, for school to open. They had given up trying to speak over the gusts of winds and the sounds of nearby construction. Some kind of on university was going to be up, something which had inspired her teachers to frequently ta wax on the benefits of higher education. Well, I had to admit, it hadn't been something she had thought about much before. It seemed so distant, so out of reach, but who would have guessed her brother Hay would get to the place where he was now? Perhaps something new and exciting would be in store for her as well. The wind, bl wind blew pieces of half-collapsed stalls of merchandise around the wet market. Leong and May could only see a few stragglers remaining. Their faces were grim and hardened, as if they were here to face a firing squad rather than sell pork and eggs. 
Urban re redevelopment had moved the residential population from this part of Koshi in the business with it. But where could these sellers go now? There was a scarcely an empty patch of land in the whole city which didn't have bulldozers ripping through it. On the mad quest to build the city of the future, something their son, who they both were immensely proud of, was deeply involved in. Was this market's destruction Hayes doing too? A terrible draft was blowing in, so Hay closed his window and resumed working. If out of hands were the devil's workshop, his job would make it him a saint. As he bounced from one part of Fujitsu to another, learning new skills about new fields as he went, he looked at the map in front of him and marveled at how much of the city looked set to change, all from the blueprints he had drawn, and at the age of 22, no less. Had he done enough? When he submitted them and they were inevitably approved, how far ahead would they bring the promised future? What was he? Just a fraud, after all. He shook his head. He couldn't be thinking that. If, assumed, if one assumed that they were mediocre, they would become so. The woods of change approached fast, and without a mercy, taking time off. The Ibuka Masu could in a sigh as Atashi Jing. Uh, oh, I think this is just all the console stuff. If you want to buy this one, please go right ahead. A man's health is nothing to ignore, Chief Executive. Shall we talk? And back to you driving. We can do it further. How about uh, some sort of liaison train for your men to, uh, could work wonders? Huh. How much approval do we have right now? Because we don't want to burn too much. I don't want to blow go below 90%. I was just trying to eliminate corruption, which is going up by 0.1 for every month. Blue are the people that walk here that walk around. There are hundreds of faces huddled in the shack. As expected, suits among tatters, tatters sitting or lying all across the floor, some of whom offered Chun their exasperated nods, hundreds of lives seeping through their seams within the pavement. Into this half-like cavern so graciously named the Committee of the Chinese Labor, a glorified refugee camp until quite recently. The committee deserved better, and so did its members, as they would appear, whether well, uh, they sorely lacked thus far. Uh, was a purpose, any purpose other than self-pity and wound-licking, and the more the committee leadership had talked with Li Chun, the more they had realized that it was perfect flag bearer. Yeah, the connections, conviction, and the spark of hope fluttering in his hands for years on end, and now a chance at truly making a difference too, however fleeting it might be. The instant Chun stepped into the gate, pair after pair of eyes turned to him, and again and again the cocktail of relief and unease tugged at his heart. It was to revitalize and coordinate his contacts all across Koshu, they decreed, alert them, get them on their feet, let them lurk within the assembly lines, and wait until the time comes to act. But when will the time be? How exactly they act? No matter how the swelling flurry people expected out of him, Chun had no answer. No one did, in fact. Now when the future stuff was being painted, Fujitsu blue with every passing day. The crackling of fire and jeeps are up to behind Chun. He turned around to see, look at the pyre. Only the other tiger burrowed into his heart again. On the covers of the incinerated paper pile was a young man in his 20s, impeccably dressed, jet black hair combed neatly back, ivory teeth, uh, peeking out of a perfectly carefree grin adorning his unmistakably Chinese face, half of it now scorched in charcoal. The pain stung for one second, but then Li Chun shrugged and stepped into the warehouse without another look back. Nothing to get sentimental over, really, because that man was not his brother. Oh, boy. No surprises. Oh, look at this. Advancements in power, efficiency, technology, and academic base. <coughs> in comparison, to the, to the walk to the door which Consul General Song seemed to enjoy converse, conversing on, uh, Ibuka's walk to the door was attached to Wang was, with, as, as with most things applying to the man, it seemed silent, uncomfortable, and tense. Wordlessly, he moved to open the door, pulling it to reveal the busy urban street outside. The chief executive adjusted his suit. Wang, sweetheart. Oh. Ibuka Master returned from, from his exit to see Atashe embraced with his wife, who seemed to have materialized from behind the, both of them. Odd, he thought. He hadn't seen her before. On first glance, he seemed relatively unassuming. He's composed, if nothing else. A perfect fit for Wang, he realized, cracking a smirk. The two conversed in, in amiable tones, exchanging menial news and relative pleasantries between themselves. The chief executive, now third wheeling to some degree, considered that this was probably the least uptight job, or at least uptight, he's ever seen Atashe. In fact, he almost said he looked like he had some sort of emotion in him. Hmm, what was she doing here, actually? A workplace visit, conveniently timed, or a message to him that the attaché was a little more human than he assumed. It was a little conspiratorial, sure, but this was Wang Jing Zhu. Conspiracy didn't exactly seem beyond him. Was making a point really enough to merit a workplace visit? Well, Ibuka Masaru concluded, conceded. He at least knew that there was even a hard booty like Wang who had family. A uh, normal, abnormal couple. Huh. Interesting. Even he may have a heart. But we have two endings for Ibuka here, apparently. The persistence path versus the reconciliation path. Do we keep pushing really hard for whatever we want in our vision? Or do we just say, we might be bad guys? There goes Egypt. Bye, Egypt. Hey, it went up a little bit more. Regions Guangdong. And there goes Iraq. Nice. Something about something, something. The oil crust is something. Nope, oh, I'm down here. Probably the Philippines. Sorry, right. everything's just collapsing around us. Pretty normal if you ask me. There we go. Time to collapse. Aftershocks. 
Oh, I think I've read this one before. So the machine comes to a halt. If you're wondering about this, please go ahead. Ibuka and the oil crisis. Oil crisis on the Silicon Delta. And that destroyed our growth. God dang it. <laughs> the spanner in the works. The cosmos always had a way of toying with people. Just when the gears have finally clicked into place, disaster strikes. Just when the future is finally strove within a reach, it's seemingly ripped from our hands once more, this time by neither Morita nor Matsushita, but by imbecilic people and equally imbecilic squabbles half a global way. Where three continents converge, the conf conflagration of war ravages everything in sight. As oil fields burn and global commerce evaporates, Guangdong, like the rest of the planet, is caught in the heat. This rise on the throne of the set, however, will only be fleeting, as will be all the panic and dread that's bound to follow. We ask you, citizens Guangdong, where is that there to fear? Why aren't unforeseen calamities precisely what Guangdong's model of excellence and competitiveness and adaptability has accounted for? There's nothing to fear, nothing at all. With diligence in our hearts and just the right amount of fine-tuning our policies, we shall, we shall rise to the challenge, emerging stronger and brighter, and assure our skeptics both home and abroad, just what we, vanguard of the future, are made of. We only lose 15% stability, that's all. Chances now. Mm, the future belongs to Fujitsu. This is 50 political power. Wow, destroys our institution support. Below the fuse. Test has come. Well, all once in a lifetime, economic crash does make the population susceptible to panic, but two in a little less than a decade, predictably, the hysteria has claimed our nation, and the harbingers of stability are finally at hand. A reminder of the Guangdong Yi's is in order. The people must be reminded that this obstacle is little more than just one test, and Fujitsu's foresight shall see us through it, like it always has. Nice. Crisis? What crisis? For his most part. A book of Master met with the oil crisis with a combination of annoyance and dismissal. Honestly, to think that some troglodytes in the desert could throw a wrench into the machine of unrelenting progress. A galled e book to no end. Here he was, building the future itself, and his work was being derailed by people who could see no further than the iron sets of the guns. The damage of Guangdong wouldn't be terrible. A book of society is one of excellence, dignity, and ingenuity. A society born for weathering storms like the oil crisis. A book stressed that in every speech and conversation he had. Deep down, however, he felt doubt creeping in. Denial or no, no answer no. Ibuko was no fool. He had some less, some sense of danger at hand. I already saw the rumblings of a potential disaster. Two of us factories had had to reduce their output by one quarter as a result of a localized oil shortage. What might happen to the country if such shortages became widespread? What indeed? Increase the support. Ooh, well, what does that one have to kill off everyone's support? Well, the fuse. Recent difficulties in the global market have resulted in a marked increase in production costs. In order to remain competitive, it will be necessary to cut superfluous areas of expenditure. Workers will be expected to take a pay cut, and many businessmen will not receive the general subsidies they have grown accustomed to. Until the storm clears, we must take, we all must make sacrifices. Blood and coffee fought for passage through Ibuka's veins as his wavering eyes forced him through yet another report. Once again, it was not good. Lines arced down. Uh, graphs plotted out of despair, and charts predicted a wholesale collapse. More and more orders shot out of the chief executive's office at any hour of the day, depending on whenever the tiny windows of sleep presented itself willingly or otherwise, and still things remained more or less as they were, on a city road to destruction. Every part of Ibuka's body felt awful. There was the omnipresent headache, of course, his skull stuck in no man's land between the fatigue and caffeine. It's kind of like me every day. Its feeling of presence within his own body felt off, as if his skin and organs were hanging loosely off his skin, or skeleton, sloshing about the numb frame whenever he moved. Every second he felt inside, he spent inside the final threshold between life and death, and who knew, perhaps it was. If this cannot be fixed, it would be the death of all Ibuka had built, possibly including himself. Perhaps Tojo's old brutes would finally get their wish and turn Guangdong into a massive garrison. If Japan so cared a trace of its old strength, maybe Nanjing would finally give the populace the dirt paradise so many of them crave. No, these possibilities could not exist. It can only be success, for nothing follows from failure. To uh, consider failure, or to defeat, is to admit it. His vision was true, and his cause was just. It was his duty to bring about the future, and no so nothing could follow on from him. The issues would be fixed, or he would stay here fixing them. Another week of all nighters, another month, until the sun burned the earth to a cinder. No failure could be tolerated, not anyone below him, and most certainly not him. We will press on, there's no direction but forward. Slowly try and chip away the Yakuza. Support from the Chinese? Hey, finally we got it! An increase in admin efficiency. Yeah, 20%. That's better than what I thought. Oh, more political power. Oh, that is nice. Better, more, still over two. That's not bad. At least it's green now. But remaining calm. Citizens of Guangdong, you are no doubt aware our nations are experiencing a great deal of turmoil. The global oil crisis has affected us all deeply, and there will be no shortage of struggle in the days to come. I'm sure many of you are reminded of the days before I became your chief executive or of the Yusuda crisis, of the weakness and corruption that permeated our society. And you are worried, uh, repeated those days at hand, you need not fear. In just a few short years, our nation, our society, and our spirits have changed dramatically. We, Japanese, Chinese, and Zushin alike, are united in our drive for innovation and progress, and we have learned to firmly grasp the future with both hands. No more is a society built around rewarding the entrenched and corrupt, but on principles of a merit and accomplishment. Our previous crisis was of local origin and brought about by our own failures. The current crisis is of global proportions. 
Our suffering have therefore, uh, while regrettable, is currently the normal state of affairs for the nations of the earth. However, anyone who lives in Guangdong knows that we are no ordinary nation, and we are possessed with minds and tools no other nation has, now more than ever. Our drive, spirit, shall carry us forth while lesser nations and economies shall flounder. We are prepared to meet the challenges of the day, and before long find ourselves in a tomorrow few could dream of, but which we shall. Better days are at hand, and we shall all build them together. We shall endure, do not fear, and transmission, and contraction. Oh, crisis. Oh, boy. Well, it was now in full swing. Things gone. Heck. Few people in Guangdong were more aware of the bitter fact than General Nagano Shigeto of the Imperial Japanese Army. The phone call had come through for the chief executive in Nagano. It was Consul General Takashima Masuo, who had been summoned back to Tokyo on an urgent basis. Ooh. Did I read through all this? Yeah, I think really so. As one might expect during an energy crisis of the world historical proportions, Sakashima had only news of woe. This and that support traditionally given by the foreign ministry or the Greater East Asia Ministry had been cut off on recommendation of this or that good for nothing bureaucrat scrounging around for scraps of his own worthless department. What made Nagano really gnash his teeth was the order sent through the Dai Taosho and Dai Hones through Takashima's mouth. The Guangdong Kenpa Tao was to have its operational capacity cut drastically, and his operas would be redeployed elsewhere in the co prosperity sphere to meet graver needs. For all that, Nagano hated to admit it. Japan simply didn't have the money or the will to keep the order in in the city of Guangdong as they once had. The guy had only one hope, the police, which has acquitted itself decently enough during the Yasuda crisis all those years ago. If now they prove to, the, prove, to prove themselves unworthy, Nagano muttered, I know quite well what I'm going to do, and I will do it without regret. If they cannot hold themselves together by the emperor, I will do it for them. Our chance is now. With a Guangdong's ear, the people buy only Fujitsu. We have them instructed... We have instructed them to do so. While lesser competitors panic and dissolve around us, Fujitsu's innovativeness has carried us through. The time is now for Fujitsu to reach new heights, and so we must begin the climb, the pivot, and push. A book of Master had seen the reports regarding the new crisis facing a state for the oil crisis. All this news and internal signals he had been receiving over the past week were all terrible. With the oil from the Middle East expected to drop within the upcoming weeks, most of Guangdong's vital industries would also be forced to come to a grinding halt, and if that happened, the protests outside would surely be turning into riots. Something needed to be done in fast, but for once he felt stumped. He slumped in his chair and his hands massaging the many new wrinkles that were covering his face. He picked up another piece of paper, the PTRG stamp at the top. The report detailed several vehicles' prototypes that were being adapted for desert mountainous operations given the current crisis. Prototypes were expected to be ready within the month. Surely Guangdong could give the sites or rights to several oil sources in exchange for these nations to get an advantage of their complex with support equipment devised by the PTRG. The chief executive put on his jacket and prepared to leave his office. If this report was true, then it could very well be the solution that Guangdong needed to at least soften some of the effects of the crisis. But first, he needed to verify the report he was given. One wrong move here, and his vision for Guangdong could be snuffed out in an instant. The lights in the labs come alive. Nice. Well, we're going to back to the Middle East. You, me, and the Middle East. What could be better than that? We're going to go straight. Where are we going? Islamic Republic? We love the Islamic Republic of uh, whatever this is. Oh, oh wow. Tokyo owns quite a bit of Iraq, doesn't it? Um, yeah. You started it, we're going to help you end it. Do we have enough political power now? We're just going to grab this anyways. Mountain, battle plant, job center. And just to clarify, the woman at the desk said, neither you nor your husband are currently in employment, correct? Yes, replied Ayumi. My husband used to work for Masashita, but he was laid off last month. Since then, well, I can't be a housewife anymore, so I was hoping, do you have any qualifications to speak of? I hold a bachelor's degree in Japanese literature. I see, said the woman. Do you hold any previous record of employment? <clears throat> Sorry, no, said on Yumi. Uh, whatever job I would get would be my first. However, I'm an excellent communicator. You have to save that for interviews, should you get any. Now, just a few more questions. After a few more minutes of forms, it was completed and she was registered. We'll call you every week to update you on opportunities, but I can't make any promises. Most employers are reluctant to hire Japanese people for factory work, cleaning, things of that nature, too expensive, and as for office work, there's not a lot of positions right now, and they're mostly looking for men. Between you and me, I was very lucky to even get this job. The future belongs to the Fujitsu, though. Fujitsu's supremacy is unquestionable, but only two of those bright enough to see it. Our guidance has allowed the oil crusts to blow over easily enough, but there are some non-Fujitsu bureaucrats and companies that are at risk of foiling our well-crafted plans. To eliminate them, we must first grease some wheels and make concrete our influence over these institutions. A little bit of political power and a crap ton of support, but such is a price of progress. Wait for it to get better. Crises were an odd thing, John thought. You get up in the morning, look at some chaos, and then see lives get ruined in the afternoon. Give reassurances to people you know you can't help in the evening, watch the night blend into the dawn. You expect the constant gnawing sense of panic, you expect the world to crash around you. You don't expect the gnawing sense of panic and the world crashing around you to become tedious. John was tired. He was tired of longer hours. He was tired of living on somehow even crappier pay. Tired of hearing how sacrifices had to be made, but most of all, tired of his own sense of powerlessness. 
It was supposed to be some sort of level of organization now, was there not? A whole committee of Chinese labor here was meant to represent, be a representative for. The other workers certainly expected an answer from him, as he did from the rest of the organization, but what did they have to show for it? They managed to delay some rounds of firing, certainly, but at the end of the day, middle management was more afraid of corporate than a handful of rowdy, slightly rowdy workers. They were simply made to discreetly walk out with their boxes in the middle of the night instead of during the day. The issue was simple. The CCL needed more people within the factories who would be, be better able to disrupt the labor process and force some change, but joining was risky. They would need to gain the people's confidence, but confidence required results, and to get results, they needed more of a diminishing supply of people, which required results, and on and on it went, round and round in circles till it reached the stupid drain pipe. What was left to do? Hope that the situation would become so bad that his fellow workers would be forced to join him? Was it right to wish that kind of suffering on those he was supposed to assist, even if it meant results? Did it even having matter? Wasn't like it to him, up to him to in any way, sit, sit, wait for an opening, keep waiting, keep waiting, keep waiting. First look. Yoshiko gazed through the room upon room of cutting edge technology. A serviceable article could certainly be written from all she had seen. Which, how uh, much uh, rent and train prices had just increased was pretty darn fortunate. What remained to be seen was when she put pen to paper. She would recognize the words of her own. The Fujitsu engineers have been helpful in providing qu quotes and ex explanations on all next generation devices they were unveiling, and the new prototypes had a lot of number of values attached to them, all supposedly much bigger than the existing line of products. The transition to solid state metal oxide silicon semiconductor memory was to herald a revolution in computing memory, or the magnetic core of methods of old. Cathode ray tubes capable of projecting themselves onto a flat screen were in development, creating a home viewing experience more cinematic than ever previously attainable. The future was here, an unparalleled age of innovation was upon us, very convenient too, coming right after a global economic meltdown. It was certainly not without cynicism regarding the whole project, but it was not what the editor wanted. And besides, what if it was real? This was a Potkin, po uh, po Potemkin village. She'd seen far shoddy ones in her time on the mainland. Maybe the products she'd seen weren't quite ready for mass production, but serious care and attention had been paid to them. Would anyone have thought much of her all those years ago in the impoverished noble pity hire for a women's magazine? And yet she now pulled herself up to a position of respect, but dragged her publication to a position of hitherto unknown prominence. She happy to return in the favor to Guangdong, and in its hour of need, she decided, perhaps the future really is here. As we are attempting to do the best we can. Future belongs to Fujitsu. Orders are orders. We can accept this, said the branch manager. We have over 3,000 in our employ here, and you're asking us to let go of half of them, including management? We're told our positions would remain secure when Fujitsu, Fujitsu took over. I'm not asking you. I'm stating the instructions have been assigned to you, replied Hay coldly, suppressing a smirk. <laughs> he had to admit it felt pretty good to see Japanese people grovel before him. Instead of the other way around, still he was laying off over 2,000 Chinese workers. The branch manager's face seemed to be torn between laughing and crying. Don't act as if I haven't seen your face before. You book his little Chinese prodigy, huh? Excellent, sis. Excellent, that. What am, what am I supposed to do? To half the management that are becoming fired by jumped-up propaganda poster? You tell them whatever you please, replied A. If you just trust my authority in the situation, I'm happy to afford you my superiors. I'm sure they'll be very happy with the use of their, your valuable time, their valuable time during the crisis. That seemed to shut them up for good. And yet what the man said held an uncomfortable presence in his mind. Wasn't his meteoric rise quite odd, as most people, especially his, ones his age, performed their sheer variety of tasks he had been put up to at, at Fujitsu? Was it really because of his purported excellence? Could they really not find a different set of prodigies to do all the different tasks he had been assigned to? Was it merely to a propaganda? No. Hey, he couldn't think, start thinking that way, no. There was a reason he could do, he was the one thing, one doing the firing instead of getting fired, and his position could not be squandered. I'm just as worthy as any of you. The future belongs to the pearls, though. Far gone are the days when Guangdong's economy relied on inconsequential work. trinkets, rice, silk, raw material. The path to prosperity is one that leaves an everlasting impact, therefore, in the state's great urban centers, to which a countryside serves an auxiliary role in good times and proves an unwelcome destruction in bad times. As we are currently withstanding the latter, it would be prudent to redirect state resources from rural areas to where they are most sorely needed. And the man fixed it. But now all of our contingency measures have been employed to full effect, but it appeared that the aftershock of the oil crisis runs deeper than anticipated. Oil supply remains frustratingly inadequate, prices for industrial and civilian goods soar while the power of the wallet plummets, and petty wines and grumbles ferment once more within the exposed woodworks of our society. Chief Executive Ebook, of course, knows better. With unmatched intellect and unwavering dedication, he has led us through all one insurmountable obstacle after another in our quest for the future. And why should today's crisis be any exception? We have our work cut out for us, and with an extra bit of execu executive power of consolidation, Ibuka shall once again take the lead and face the challenges head on, as he always has done for our sake. Before you raise your doubts, citizens of Guangdong, and you ask yourselves, what would you be without him? More must be done to stop the oil crisis from derailing Ibuka's Guangdong much more. Ooh. Founding. Well, I think I've read about founding before. Oh, and the man fixes it, yeah. Um... Well, let's read it anyways. Lieutenant Mor Morita Akeo stood. <coughs> uh, still, after alighting from a streetcar in central Tokyo, pensively watching the evening crowds mill about in the front of Ueno Station. Live in Tokyo's picking up pace, with the war over, the admonishments to eschew luxury and merriment had quickly lost traction amongst a public eager to bask in Japan's moment in the sun. Yeah, Morita still wore his navy uniform. 
Even if the public celebrated victory, his superiors insisted that they needed to be ready to fight the next war with better bullets and smarter bombs. Nothing had changed in Morita's life for years, even as the world was beginning to move on. Hello, Morita. Ibuka Morita, uh, wheeled towards the familiar voice of Ibuka Masaru, dressed smartly in a civilian suit. I haven't seen you since you left the wartime research committee. I've been busy studying my own company, Ibuka said. People are going to want something new, something fun, now that the war's over. Fun, I've seen the exact same thing. What are you working on? You know, the old magnetic data tapes? I thought there might be a way to play music from them. Film, real, meets vinyl record. Sounds fun, Morita stopped for a second, which is all it took to come to his decision. Can I join you if you need money? I can ask my relatives. They run a musical business back. No need, Ibuka's eyes lit up at Morita's offer as he grabbed Morita's hand. I've got funds for my father already, but. I need people like you. Can you help out here, maybe? Is it desert? It's quite plains, actually. I don't know. You say Middle East, I'm thinking desert. There's an urban center. Because we already got a little bit of this, of this done already down here. If we take a good look at not this. Um, battle plan, super combat with and conditions, nighttime desert, and mountains. Well, that's desert. We're going straight to the desert. Nah, it's the quartermaster's hour. The latest con consignment of Fujitsu helicopter gunships is certainly st state-of-the-art technology. Equipped with the latest in computerized guidance systems and arsenal of high-end rocketry, the gunship was a potent offensive weapon. Where artillery barrages or napalm ruins were unavailable, most often when Japanese troops were too close to the enemy for, the, for it to be safe, Fujitsu's choppers would be out there, drowning the enemy in a sea of fire. The upshot, though, was the cost. Field commanders knew that losing one of the gunships in combat would result in a frenzied hiding from the division's procurement office. Each one cost enough to outfit a few extra companies of troops, and the Army Budgetary Office was not shy on reminding field commanders of that at any given opportunity. With fiscal responsibility concerns so prominent, though, the gunship often only saw limited use in the field. Commanders unwilling to risk their displeasure that spears would use them only when the infantry cleared out most of the opposition, ironically. So we're in a situation in which a helicopter gunship was least useful. Some teething problems. But we're working on it. Nice. Oh, no, not the product cycle leaving us. We're doing an okay job here. It's not hot enough, really, for us, but whatever. Going dark. Still haven't heard anything, said Officer Wong, uh, rubbing his hand over his head. Phones are down over there, no smell, no nothing. It's just like you see it all over. The officer barked the Fujitsu militiaman in the corner. In the last two weeks, crime rates in this area almost tripled. Do not do not waste the time or department's time on auto chatter. <laughs> Funny as always, Zujin officers, the company man screamed at, though, thought Wong. Stupid Katayama can battle on endlessly about baseball and be never bat an eyelid. He and the Zujin raised their eyes towards each other, then went back to work. It was true. Crime really had tripled. That lot of any of them could do anything about it with the personnel at their disposal. Maybe if Astro Boy over in the corner could do something besides hanging out about the precincts and yell Zujin and quote crime statistics, it'd be a different story, but no, that can't happen. How much did the equipment cost again? He looked at the clock for an update time before his eyes briefly rested on Officer Lamb. An odd one, that guy. Apparently he had a big emotional outburst a while back in public. That someone ended up stopping a riot. You wouldn't be able to tell by looking at him. The man barely talked, barely emoted. Wong wondered how Lam's family were. At this point, you could probably tell him that they all died in a rock slide and get a little more than a curt nod. It's calmly going through all his work as if there's no crisis. Just another day of the job. Wong wasn't sure if there was any way of re in any reassuring way. In any way reassuring. We decided to get back on his own task before another round of screaming. Keeping it together, a broken man. Restore power. Spark of innovation must be led new one way or another, or wield circuitry. Ooh, we get more stability. Every defect, every imperfection must be sold, slaughtered together anew. In the battles of old, most casualties occurred before a route, where retreating armies became impaled on the spirits of the pursuers. It's been perhaps too easy for assistance to remember in this land of cutting edge technology. The panic generated by an economic downturn has the potential to be much more harmful than the immediate and financial consequences. As such, we must put the full force of our connections and devices towards ensuring calm at all costs. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to end the episode there. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we're going to have a good time in Iraq. Maybe. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.